everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're gonna dye a sock blank in my shoebox technique. But of course, there's gonna be a little bit of a twist because I think that, well, I mean, we'll see how things go. But I think that instead of lifting the yarn up and putting it back down to get a more muted spread color overall, uh, when I lift up our yarn or a blank here, I want to go and steam set that immediately to try to maintain some of that beautiful color that we have. So we'll see how this all goes. But right here I have a Wool to Die For Platinum Sock Blank. Uh, it is a single stranded blank and so we actually have a lot of fabric here and the gauge of this blank is way tighter than the double stranded blanks, um, which I always found interesting. Now, a blank is just a pre-knit piece of fabric that you intend to unravel to turn into something else. And most of the blanks I dye are double stranded, which means that you would get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn to use. Here, we're not gonna get a matched set. We're gonna get just 100 grams of yarn that will probably have some asymmetric pattern to it. I'm gonna pre-soak our blank uh, in some plain tap water. Now platinum sock, did I say that this is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon? Uh, it is pretty absorbent, so it should soak up water pretty quickly, but I will go ahead and let this pre-soak for at least 30 minutes uh, before we go and set up our dyeing process. She's pretty. For our dyes, we're gonna use a combination of Jacquard's Bright Yellow, Hot Fuchsia, both of these are mixed at a 1% stock solution, where we have one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. And then I'm gonna to need to weigh out and dissolve some Dharma Caribbean Blue, so we can have a blue to use for our rainbow we're aiming for. To mix up the dry dye powder, I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and then carefully measured out a little bit of the blue dye. A little bit of this dye is gonna go a long way. All I knew is that I wanted around 0.2 grams of dye or less for this blue. Once I had that dye allocated, I then dissolved it in some hot tap water, not worrying a ton about the total volume that I was mixing it in, but this volume I'm gonna use as a bit of a reference when we bring over our pink and our yellow, because I think we're gonna dilute those dyes. We ended up with about 0.15 grams of our Caribbean blue. So let's use that as a bit of a standard for us today and set up our yellow and pink dyes. So I think I'm gonna want 15 milliliters of the hot fuchsia, approximately. And I'm gonna dilute this with some water to have approximately the same volume as we have with our blue. And in the meantime, I can do this to rinse out the graduated cylinder a little bit. I will go rinse it more properly at the sink. But just eyeballing things, we're increasing our volume of liquid that we have. And this will make it easier to spread out the dyes onto our yarn. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the bright yellow. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow. We're gonna get 20 milliliters. <laughs> Just because yellow, I mean, the blue is intense, the pink is intense, and for a lot of colors that go in the middle, that yellow just needs a little bit more oomph. So why not have just a little bit more of it? Because also that is not the color <laughs> that is likely to be the problem on our blank. And I should remember that we're actually not gonna end up with all of the dye on our yarn. Because some of this dye is gonna be left behind and we're gonna have to find something else to do with it. Okay, here I have a plastic shoe box. 
And I'm gonna bring over our pre-soaked sock blank to add her into this container. Don't worry, we'll move it around. Now I'm gonna go measure out approximately four cups of our pre-soaked liquid, which is just water. But I figured that we'd measure out the water for reproducibility's sake. A lot of times in the shoe boxes, I start with eight cups of water. I went for a, we're gonna start with the smaller volume and we may add more liquid because I wasn't sure how dwarfed our fabric would be. And you know, I do think I want a little bit more liquid because we've got some yarn that is at the surface and that's not really what I want. Okay, I'm gonna add two more cups. That gives us about six cups of water. So now when we add our dyes, and I'm gonna sort of move the yarn again, just so that way everything is a little free-flowing and floaty. Free-flowing and floaty. I think that that'll work nicely. Now it's time to add the color. And you know, when I add the colors, we don't have to add 100% of everything. It's okay if we don't, but we don't have any acid in here yet. And we're gonna just pour these colors on. Okay, I wanna start with the pink and I'm gonna add it both to this one side, but also a little bit to the other. I'm adding most of that down to that one side. Next is our yellow, sort of going here in the middle, and then coming in with our blue, which the blue I'm bringing all the way down. And that blue is spreading a lot. We're just gonna breathe and deal with it. It's very hard for me to deal with it. <laughs> you know, I'm making up the rules here. I can add acid now. Right, I don't have to wait. So a tablespoon of vinegar there. Tablespoon of vinegar there. And a tablespoon in the middle. Things are still gonna spread, but we can add a little bit more acid right before I lift. I'm nervous that these colors are gonna spread out too much. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. This is so hard waiting. <laughs> okay, Rebecca. Breathe. We're gonna wait, oh gosh. Let's wait 15 minutes and then we'll be back. The 15 minutes are up and I think I want to change the camera angle before I remove the yarn. No, actually I'll do it side by side. All right, not necessarily the best angle, but here in my steamer basket, I have a couple inches of water, maybe one and a half inches of water, and I have this steamer insert here. So my plan, instead of, it's funny how I don't see purples down there anymore, Instead of lifting the blank up and adding it back in here, I'm going to lift the blank up, add it here, and then go and take this to um, the stove to heat set it. Ooh, I'm nervous. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna grab it here and here, lift. That's really, really pretty. Let some of that water drain. Then into the steamer basket, kind of arranged a little bit as it was. Here we go, and over to the stove. I suppose I could have added more acid there. Um, I turned the heat on and I am setting this up, but we do have a gradient in here and let's try to take advantage of this a little bit with this skein of yarn that had a little bit of dye on it already. This was a yarn mop that did not have very much dye, but we're adding it in to this asymmetric gradient we had going on 
just to see what we get. And I didn't even show you the yarn mop to show you all those colors in there. Maybe I will be confused. <laughs> Rebecca, go get a screenshot from the live stream that shows what the mop looked like. But now for this mop, which I'm actually really happy that we did something with it. You know what? We have this tiny amount of dye rinsed from those cups. We'll toss that in there. Why not? I'm going to place a lid on this and I'm going to go take this outside and let it sit overnight at least maybe a couple days because today's a Friday. Um, but then we'll steam set this later on. That way we leave no dye behind. Here's our steamer basket that's still heating up. But we have a beautiful rainbow, like bright rainbow blank. Um, things did not blend like they did when I played around with something like this in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for 30 minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, it has been 30 minutes. Now, one thing I'm very curious about, because this was dripping dye, there's not that much color down there, which is exciting. Now, because of the way that these colors are, I think what I want to do, and you know, I'm just feeling a little bit nervous. I'm just adding a little bit of acid onto them, just in case. I'm going to turn off the heat and just let everything sit in here for a little while. I've done a lot of yarn dyeing today. I've been having a lot of things to wash and I see no problem in letting this chill out here in the steamer basket a little bit longer. It's maybe an hour later. Let's remove ooh, our yarn and let it cool. I wonder if we have any purple notes, but maybe we have a little bit of indigo down there. We'll take a closer look, but I now need to let this, it's warm. It's no longer hot, but I want to let it cool completely so we can wash it. Here's our rainbow sock blank. And I want to just get a feel for our pattern. Oh dear, this isn't working. This has a real tie-dye feel from the way it was scrunched. Honestly, with the exception of not having as much purple on that end, this worked so well and so much dye stuck itself to the yarn in that short period of time, which honestly is something that we knew. I'm trying to add some soap. Um, and the reason why we knew that that would happen is that when I lifted the yarn up in previous times, we saw that some of the dye had connected. But there was even more dye that didn't, and so I am very, very excited. As we see no color bleeding, I'm very excited to see how that yarn mop turns out. Even though it had a hair of color from some other yarn, it was fun to see that even after, gosh, it must have been about a minute that I had the yarn sort of raised up before coming back, and it's just cold. The, the colors weren't diffusing through the liquid that quickly. So we ended up with something bright and glorious here. Now, if I had had more water in there, we could have ended up with something muddier. And if I had less water in there, we could have ended up with a lot more white. So it's hard to know exactly what would happen, but I'm gonna put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a closer look. But I suppose before we take a closer look at this yarn, Let's check in on our yarn mop. It's been about two and a half days. Let's take a look at our yarn mop. This is super pretty. Now I need to remember there was color on here before, but check that out. Oh my goodness. There's definitely some breaking. Uh, we had some asymmetry in here even after removing our blank. Oh, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna go steam set this for 30 minutes on the stove top, and then I'll show you when we go remove it. And the nice thing you can see is our water is completely clear. Let's check our yarn mop. I'm gonna turn off the heat here. She is pretty, smells like vinegar. <laughs> uh, 
I'm gonna let her cool, I don't know why this one is a her, um, but I'm gonna let her cool completely. Uh, and then I think I'll wash this skein off camera, but I'll show you what the mop looks like uh, once she's dry. Let's wash this yarn, which, you know, it has a real oxidizing copper kind of vibe to it. I'm gonna add a little soap. I always rinse off these pans to rinse the acid off of them because they get holes over time. But let's see. I'm hoping. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm hoping we won't have any bleeding. Let's fill up the water again. I know that it was just a couple days ago that I dyed this, but I wonder what my color leftovers were from. I honestly cannot remember. <laughs> oh, is this a leftover with the rainbow? Funny, I knew before, but then I've been washing a lot of stuff. I've been filming conclusions for a ton of videos. And so I completely forgot what this had come from. I was like, I know we've got a leave no die behind game. But anyway, we're not seeing any bleeding, so that is good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this yarn through my spin dryer to remove some liquid. It helps it dry a little faster. I'll hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back for some conclusions. But I can't believe I momentarily forgot which video this was a part of. And in fact, maybe I was even gonna wash it off camera and forgot. <laughs> Here is our finished single stranded sock blank in all of its glory. And our colors here aren't that muted. There is a little bit of mixing, but really not as much as what I might have anticipated. And so I think that that's pretty cool. Of all the colors, the pink, I think, has almost the least impact on our yarn, which surprises me a little bit. We have a little bit of orange, not very much, but I did add some pink to both ends and we don't have a ton of purple, only a few hints. But don't forget that we added the dye into our shoe box and then added acid and quickly removed it. And we know those pinks take longer time to absorb. So I'm not sure if it just took longer for the color to move around, if lots of it was in contact with the yarn, or what. Nevertheless, we got these beautiful tie-dye watercolor patterns on the yarn from letting it just be with everything for such a short period of time and not really allowing things to heat set. And then removing the blank and putting it straight into a steamer basket. This worked super, super well. And believe me, I've got notes down in the video description so that way I can try to replicate some of this. Now, the yarn mop has a lot of blending, a lot of teal. It did have some color on it before. And we do have some of the pinks poking through. But honestly, it's way more blue focused than maybe I would have anticipated with the colors. But also, it did have dye on it before, so I have to keep that on my, in mind. It is pretty remarkable how even with, again, some color, not a lot on this yarn mop, but we did get a variegated coverage because I didn't stir that leftover dye bath before moving it. We lifted the blank out and maybe it sit for a little bit before I decided to add this yarn in. And in that span of time, we were still able to get something that was beautiful and variegated. And so I think that that's really, really exciting. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your thoughts on which type of rainbow sock blank you prefer. Do you prefer that I move it and put it back in the dye bath to get a more muted rainbow? Or do you prefer the brights and that I remove it and then do something else with the leftover dyes? I think both are super, super fun, and I'm absolutely interested in playing around with all of this more in the future. Please subscribe and turn on notifications, do all the youtube -y things so you don't miss a video, but also your engagement really helps uh, the content here and is the biggest thing you can do to help support everything Chemnitz. 
If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, you can join to become a channel member and get fun emotes and badges next to your name, or you can go and shop in the Chemist Creations Etsy shop to bring home some hand dyed yarn that has been featured in one of my videos. You can find the links and more information about everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.